Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are in the world, and welcome to the first session in the CCD rounds. My name is Niels Lund, and I'm the global lead for cities changing diabetes in Novo Nordisk. A year ago, exactly this day, we were supposed to have gathered more than 300 people from more than 30 countries in the city of Munich for a big summit that we call the cities changing diabetes summit. Because of the coronavirus, we decided to cancel it two uh, weeks out, and that was a really uh, big lost opportunity to share knowledge, to share insights, and learn from each other in this uh, network. Today, we would like to uh, to to uh, uh, to enable this knowledge sharing uh, once again and do it in a virtual way by by having these uh, cities changing diabetes uh, rounds. Because we think it's important now that the network of cities has grown to more than 35 cities uh, around the world, that we can meet and, and to the best uh, ability within a virtual uh, context uh, uh, to, uh, to exchange uh, experiences and share best, class, uh, best in class interventions and collaborate and support each other uh, to, uh, to uh, create a, a even better solutions locally. So this will be the first in a series of uh, CCD rounds. We will come back roughly uh, every sec second month to, uh, to bring you uh, a new expert and new uh, interesting intervention, uh, uh, an exciting uh, piece of research uh, to you some, so everyone can learn from. And you know, even with the limited abilities for, for direct interaction, we encourage you to participate and share your questions with us. On your screen, to the top right, there will be a small question mark. And if you want to pose a question, either uh, during the talk or in the Q&A session that will follow after more or less half an hour, you know, pose your question and, and then we will uh, uh, try to do our best to get the, the, uh, the question answered. But uh, let's get uh, right away. Um, and uh, I'm delighted to introduce the first uh, participant or speaker in this uh, in this series. It's uh, Dr. Paul Block, who is team leader at the Steno Diabetes Center Copenhagen. Paul will introduce us to Tingbia Changing Diabetes, a long-term community intervention that I think we can all learn from. Um, and we're looking forward to hearing your insights, Paul, so please go ahead. Thank you so much, Nils. <clears throat> it is a great pleasure for me today to be able to uh, talk to you about how we work with diabetes prevention and health promotion in Copenhagen. But before doing so, please try to imagine that you have a job in which you make decisions about what to do to improve public health and prevention in your city. You may be a head of department or an elected member of a city council or something similar. Imagine that diabetes and other non-communicable diseases are highly prevalent in your city and for years, if not for decades, have been a prime public health concern. Imagine that citizens in your city to a large extent know what to do to prevent these illnesses by reducing weight, eating healthily, being physically active, adopting a healthy lifestyle, but for some reason they don't do it. Imagine that you were asked to do something about it, that you were given an assignment and some money, not a lot, to find solutions and to bring about change. What would you do? Perhaps you would talk to some of the citizens who are at the greatest risk or suffer the most about how they cope with their illness. Perhaps you would ask them about their challenges and needs in everyday life. Perhaps you would not assume or suggest that you had all the answers and knew what was best for them. Perhaps you would ask them how you might help them. Perhaps you would consider the notion that health and prevention is largely created outside the health sector, in the settings of everyday life where people live, love and play. 
Perhaps you would invite citizens to take part in defining the problems and in developing solutions. Perhaps you would realize that solutions would differ from one location to the other, depending on demographics and on the availability of local resources, support structures, facilities and settings. Perhaps you would recommend locally defined solutions to make sure that they are relevant and meaningful to the citizens who live there. Perhaps you would bring together a group of professionals to work together to support the local communities and neighborhoods in addressing their challenges and acting on their needs. And perhaps these professionals would have different skills and represent different organizations in the public sector, the private sector, civil society and academia. Now, this could be the conclusion and the end of my presentation. If you talk to people, listen to people, are responsive to their needs and demands, you will probably discover that their needs and demands are fair and reasonable and not very sophisticated or costly. And if, ever, if everyone work together and contribute their respective skills and resources, then the challenges can be resolved and the needs and demands fulfilled. Anyway, I still have another 20 minutes talking time. So let me therefore say a few words, as promised, about how we work with diabetes prevention and health promotion in Copenhagen. So I'll just share my screen with you. I'm working with health promotion and diabetes prevention at Steno Diabetes Center Copenhagen. A Steno Diabetes Center Copenhagen is a public hospital under the capital region of Denmark. It is specialized in diabetes care, research, education, prevention and health promotion. It is also a global partner in the Cities Changing Diabetes Program and it's a local partner in Cities Changing Diabetes Copenhagen. At Steno, we recognize that complex interventions to prevention of obesity and diabetes are the most effective. And that the settings of everyday life offer excellent opportunities for reaching out to citizens respectfully and equitably. At Steno, we have developed the super setting approach to mobilize local communities for public health action based on coordinated engagement of multiple stakeholders in multiple community settings. The super setting approach embodies five principles. Integration, to ensure that activities are implemented across the boundaries of specific settings. Participation, to ensure that people are motivated to take ownership of processes of developing and implementing activities. Empowerment, to ensure that people acquire skills and competences to express and act on their needs and aspirations. Context, to ensure that everyday life challenges of citizens and of professionals are respected and considered in the planning of activities. And knowledge, to ensure that research-based knowledge is produced from actions and used to inform actions. To promote sustainability of actions, we invest heavily in relation building with partners, both vertically and horizontally. Vertical integration secures commitment at all levels within each partner organization. Horizontal integration secures a productive working relationship between partner organizations by negotiating the terms of engagement and by matching expectations of partners. At Steen, we recognize the importance of working through social sector institutions to achieve health impact. 
This is because health is rooted in social determinants and therefore depends on social action and social change. And because social sector institutions master the art of trust and relation building with citizens. At Stena, we acknowledge the need for long-term and sustained change processes. And we therefore work in iterative cycles of implementing assessing and improving actions. Tingbia Changing Diabetes provides a fine example of how we work and work together as partners to promote social development, healthy living and diabetes prevention. Tingbia is an urban neighborhood situated in the outskirts of Copenhagen, about eight kilometers from the city center. It is a high risk area for diabetes and has a prevalence of type 2 diabetes of almost 10% within the adult population. This is double the average for the whole of Copenhagen. It is a disadvantaged neighborhood in terms of social challenges with relatively low levels of occupation, education, income and so forth. Tingbia Changing Diabetes is a long-term strategic engagement in community development. It is organized around a wide and dynamic partnership of professionals from the public sector, the private sector, civil society and academia. It is a community-based in initiative embracing the entire neighborhood, including its various population groups, professional stakeholders, organizations, institutions, enterprises, settings and so forth. We involve professional stakeholders and citizens in three overall processes of engagement, co-analyzing the situation, co-creating interventions and co-evaluating actions. Citizens are involved because they are the rightful owners of processes of developing and implementing change in their own neighborhood. In terms of co-analyzing the situation, we have developed and applied the local community analysis tool in order to map, describe and understand how the neighborhood is structured, who lives there, who work there, what do residents and other local stakeholders think about the neighborhood, its strengths, challenges and opportunities. Our investigations have shown <clears throat> that there is a great diversity of green spaces and outdoor facilities for social engagement and physical activity, but also that these facilities are largely underutilized. We have observed that there are numerous social networks and associations in St. Pierre, and that they create a strong sense of belonging among their users, but also that these networks are largely underutilized. We have observed that vulnerable residents experience more pressing problems in everyday life than diabetes. Problems that are rooted in the social contexts of their everyday lives, including poverty, unemployment, insecurity, loneliness and mental illnesses. And we have observed that residents call for intensified social support, interaction and engagement across population groups in the neighborhood and across professional stakeholders operating in the neighborhood. In terms of co-creating interventions, we work together with people to identify, develop and implement solutions to community-based challenges and needs. You may apply specific tools to do so, but you don't need to. You need to listen, you need to be open-minded and you need to be responsive. At Steno, we have developed a variety of tools for respectfully engaging in dialogue with people, <clears throat> whether they are civilians or professionals, healthy or diseased, socially strong or vulnerable. In terms of co-evaluating actions, we involve residents of the neighborhood, mainly youth groups in processes of designing evaluation approaches, collecting and managing data and disseminating the findings in the neighborhood. This provides citizens with influence on what should be evaluated and how it should be done. 
the super setting is maintained and expanded over time in size and in scope. This is probably the only realistic way to achieve desired outcomes on social determinants and health. Maintenance and expansion is a dynamic process based on engaging with new partners, generating new ideas and developing new projects together. This slide shows the various projects that we have implemented, that we are implementing and that we plan to implement in the coming years. The red line shows where we are right now. We are currently preparing for projects on citizens' use of nature, on organic urban farming, and on climate alleviation through community recycling schemes. A fine example of one of the projects in Tingbia Changing Diabetes is Tingbia Community Restaurant. This is a community-driven restaurant in which food is prepared and served by citizens who organize themselves in groups and workshops that are supervised by a professional chef. The restaurant has both indoor and outdoor facilities. It's open for everyone once every week, and it serves an exclusive three-course dinner at a very low cost. During the rather extensive COVID lockdown in Denmark, the restaurant had to reconceptualize, and this gave rise to various arrangements that involved digital platforms. One such arrangement was the home cooking restaurant, in which families collected food bags in the community restaurant, containing ingredients for a three-course dinner and a web link to video transmitted cooking instructions. Participating families were also invited to sign up for a photo-based contest on who could produce the most delicious meal. And three winners received a $100 voucher that was donated by a local supermarket to buy commodities in the supermarket. Tingbia Community Restaurant has been up and running since early 2020 and has become a very popular initiative in the neighborhood. There has been a total of 18 openings with more than 400 visitors. Registration of attendance has shown that the restaurant embraces a rather broad, broad spectrum of residents of the neighborhood, except one population group, youth. In consequence of that, we are now preparing for the launching of a Tingbia youth restaurant, in which young residents of the neighborhood will take ownership of defining and implementing a restaurant concept of their own liking. Tingbia Changing Diabetes involves four different evaluation components, addressing perceptions and attitudes, which provides subjective and qualitative data on citizens and other stakeholders based on interviews and observations. Behaviors and practices, which provides both subjective and objective quantitative data on citizens based on questionnaires and various tests. Socioeconomic status, which provides objective quantitative data on citizens based on retrieving and analyzing person-specific data from national registers. And finally, and by far the most controversial component of biomedical and clinical measures, which provides objective and quantitative data on citizens' health, based on clinical examinations and blood sampling, et cetera. The problem is that in Denmark, Clinical examination and blood sampling may trigger all sorts of emotional reactions. And these may challenge the relationship of trust that we have built with citizens over the past years. This is an unresolved dilemma for us, and we are still trying to figure out how best to obtain objective data from citizens without jeopardizing their trust in us. When looking back in time at our engagement in Tingbia, we have noted two factors that are particularly important for establishing a conducive environment for action and change. And these are structure and the sense of being equal. 
two somewhat contrasting factors, you may say, and yet factors that are mutually dependent, where one cannot do without the other. And where the key to success may be to find a proper balance between exercising control and letting go of control. Let me end this presentation by giving you five tips for how to get started with similar initiatives in your own city. Work through partnerships with stakeholders from different sectors and professions. Pool your resources and accept power sharing. Agree on visions and principles for action to keep direction and coherence of your intervention as the initiative grows bigger and wider. Understand your community, including its various population groups and their challenges, needs and aspirations. Work with people, not for people. Empower them and give them influence and ownership. And start small scale with few but dedicated partners and projects. projects. Pick the low hanging fruits and slowly build up the initiative. Have a look for yourself at some of the many other activities in Tingbia at tingbiachangingdiabetes.dk. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. What I really like about uh, the Think Bear Think Changing Diabetes uh, program is that it is a, such a true uh, demonstration of the fact that uh, health is created outside the health sector. I, you started with that, and uh, and also it's a very very powerful demonstration about about what community and so civil society organizations can do as a as a to leverage and also as a as a to transform uh, local communities to uh, to do more than what was originally intended by the sports club the uh, the library uh, the scout organization and so on and, and it's a, it's a really uh, really smart and, and i think also cool demonstration of 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 that uh, so now we come to the q a uh, and I encourage uh, everyone to uh, to participate by submitting using the question mark in the in the right side of your screen to uh, to post your question. Then I uh, will get them uh, transferred uh, to uh, to a screen uh, near me that I can you know give it back to uh, to send it back to Paul for for some uh, for some answers here. And I hopefully we can have a dialogue. And I would like to be the facilitator of that. Um, so uh, as you warm up uh, to uh, think about your questions, uh, I have a few prepared, and uh, and I think one that that I think many are thinking about is that so you have uh, you are well on the way in Tingbia. You've also been there quite a few years. Um, with with your experience, Paul, as a, as you know, both a, as active in community engagement, but also as a researcher, and with your experience from around the world. What what uh, what things uh, can be applied, or rather, can these uh, approaches be applied in other settings, in other geographies, in other cultures? Um, what's your thought on that? No, absolutely. And I think, as a, as a researcher at Steno, it is not our duty only to address the situation in Timbia, but also to um, to develop the models and approaches that get that can be applied elsewhere. So this is a main purpose of Tingbia as of Steno as a partner in Tingbia. It's not necessarily a main purpose of some of the many other partners that are involved in, in Tingbia. So yes, absolutely. We we um, develop for the same reasons uh, pro uh, approaches, principles, techniques, tools, methods that all have universal applicability. Mm. Um, it is constantly on our minds that what we do in Tinkia, we need to dissect and understand what is applicable elsewhere and what is not. Mm. And uh, our supersetting approach is definitely applicable elsewhere. It talks about bringing stakeholders and people together. And no matter where you are in the world, this is a, an interesting and important set of values. Mm -hmm. We have developed specific principles that are universal in their nature. Mm -hmm. We adopt and use techniques and tools that are designed to be applicable and used uh, in many other contexts. 
But we have to understand that the interventions themselves, the projects, the activities that we implement, they are highly context dependent. That is their strength. The strength of the activities is that they are developed by and all adapted to the concrete situation on the ground in Tingbia, in that particular community. So they are not universally applicable, but many of the other things that we are using in our, in our approach, they are highly universe, uh, universal and can be applied yeah. as well. Even in, in communities with, with, with limited resources, yeah. no matter where you are, then even with very limited resources, these um, approaches and principles and techniques are, are uh, usable uh, in, in other contexts. Yeah, mm. super exciting. Uh, maybe I can make a small uh, plug for the uh, Urban Diabetes Action Framework that I know you have also been part of of developing. Yes. It's uh, on cityschangingdiabetes.com. We have uh, a uh, part of the website dedicated to, yes, the Urban Diabetes Action frame, Framework, where which is basically a step-by-step guide to how to design community interventions that uh, you know take you know take some of the uh, methods that you have a- applied to that local situation and then you design the in- interventions that is relevant for that uh, that population so uh, if you uh, are on out there in the world want to uh, to learn from some of these uh, experiences either, either go to tinkbiachangingdiabetes.dk as as Paul mentioned but also uh, check out cityschangingdiabetes.com and look for the urban diabetes uh, action f- uh, framework uh, you mentioned that uh, in in your in your talk that trust uh, is uh, is an important uh, factor here. Uh, what uh, how did how did you go about it? Because trust is is not something that exists with a snap mm. of a, a finger. Uh, but but how did you uh, how did you do that? And how did you do, uh, increase and develop that trust over time? So trust is a is a re- relational issue. It has to do with uh, being very honest and being very genuine towards each other, uh, because if not, then trust will not build. And what what um, what Steno has been doing, as an outsider, we are an outsider coming in to join neighborhood processes of citizens and locally operating professional stakeholders. What we have done. Uh, in getting access to the community is not so much building trust with citizens because we don't have to do that because there are other professional stakeholders who already have a trusting relationship with uh, with citizens. So our main effort has been to establish trust with other local community stakeholders in the public sector, in the private sector, in civil society, in forming this um coalition, this partnership that uh, is so important to uh, to have established in order to uh, obtain synergy in a, in a, in engagement in act- in activities in the community. Mm. So what we have done is to first of all to fully respect the agendas uh, of these other organizations as being just as relevant, meaningful and important as our own agendas. Because once you have adopted and accepted other organizations' agendas, then it's much easier to offer your competences and your skills and your resources in supporting their agendas, not in supporting your own agenda. And this is the approach that we have taken. We have offered ourselves to the local community stakeholders and said, what can we do? We are coming in as a research institution with various skills Uh, both research-wise, uh, facilitation-wise, and also creativity-wise, is there something that, that we can do to support? And then slowly, slowly, this begins to develop into an equitable partnership of equal-minded uh, organizations. And this is where trust is generated. But it requires honesty, and it mm-hmm. requires that you let go of your, of your, um, let's say, preconceived Um, uh, agendas and be open-minded towards other other uh, development agendas. That's what we've done. And, and really interesting. And and uh, the issue of trust building is, I think, is something that you know everyone who is working in coalition building is uh, has uh, as as top of mind. It's so easy to get it wrong and so difficult to get it right. And and you need to invest the the right amount of uh, of time and, and and energy in it. And and also this respect, the listening and and so on, as as, as you are saying. Um, we have a question here from uh, Klaus uh, from from Austin. Uh, 
and it also speaks to the uh, the power of uh, of community and and coalitions here. Um, one one thing is you you're working uh, very much through uh, a, a number of local community organizations. But have you seen evidence of um, of experimentation outside these organizations? You know, so that they, uh, you know, that you know, uh, flowers start to bloom outside your master plan. What, what I think that, that I've seen, I don't know if I understand the question right, what, what, we, what we have seen is that that the different organizations that we work with, work with, work with they, have, they have, I mean, quickly adopted our, our mindsets, our way of thinking. And we can see that over the years, as trust has developed, that all these, the barriers, they have, they have collapsed. And we, that we can much more genuinely engage in both in the in critical and constructive dialogue as to how to move forward. But we should not be naive because uh, because other community-based organisations have their own development agendas. So it's always a balance that has to be made between what is it that what, what is the reason for their engagement in community and how can they um, uh, contribute to uh, the overall purpose um, of. Um, the, co the collective uh, engagement that we are that we are establishing, okay. but we can definitely see a change. There's no doubt about that. That we can see a change in the mindsets of the different organisations that we work with, and what we contribute is a sort of coordination. We we have, have dedicated ourselves and our and some of our resources to coordinate actions in the community to foster and create a conducive environment for working together. Yeah. And I think we are succeeding there because this is a platform then that allows organizations to be more open because the forum is there. The, the platform is there for being it. Yeah. I don't know if that answers the, the question. But it it, it does, like uh, but sometimes innovation comes out of out of uh, places that you did not expect and, and sometimes takes a shape and form that that you uh, you know uh, that you didn't didn't foresee. We have a question from uh, from Mexico City, um, where I saw in the analysis of the case um, that it took three years in the formation uh, phase. Please share your recommendations for this phase. It could be difficult to start to take the first step. And this is from uh, Gisela from uh, from Mexico City. And if, if I may add, um, uh, uh, the devil's advocate would say that the super setting, you know, is is a is a really big animal to. You know, put in the local community, and and you can continue to add partners and stakeholders and and activists and and so on and so much that you are you know you're spending all your time and energy in simply just be bringing people together, and then then you almost forget to do something you know the, to do the things that actually drive change uh, for for people. What's what's your th thought on this, and 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 how how are you uh, how are you continuously working to make sure that you also, as you are demonstrating, uh, bring some uh, some true interventions and and changes to uh, to to the to, to the situation on the ground. But but I mean, innovation and creativity is formed when the environment is conducive. So we are investing, is investing resources in securing and doing whatever we can to establish a conducive environment for innovation, because this is where the secrets are. If we are to move forward in such a complex agenda as non-communicable diseases combat, then we have to be innovative. So this is about establishing the right platform for innovation. And that has to do with trust building. That has to do with coalitions. That has to do with creating safe environments, comfortable environments for citizens and for stakeholders to mm -hmm. operate. Yeah. So it is worth investing these resources. Yeah. And we, we do demonstrate that we can also work effectively and deliver as well as coordinating and bringing people together in processes that are facilitated and generating yeah. new ideas and and new projects so so we we can demonstrate this that that both things are important if you want to bring this very deep, complex agenda forward as non communicable diseases are yeah. and as far as the question in the, in um, in mexico city is concerned yes it took a while for us it took a long time for us to establish ourselves as a trustworthy partner because this is a community that has been blamed uh, for many many years of all their problems and challenges and so forth they have been uh, 
presented in medias for various uh, uh, social uh, problems and so forth. And we don't want to do that uh, at all. We want to change these uh, sort of uh, stories about uh, the local community as being a very resourceful community. So we have engaged uh, ourselves in, the, in this community for quite a long while, trying to establish ourselves as a credible partner that is not coming to blame anyone, but as coming to, to, to uh, work together and deliver. And that has taken a while. So what we did in the first years was to offer our expertises. So we supported, for instance, um, household-based surveys to study and understand uh, how the community is in terms of demographics, social issues, um, 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 health issues and so forth uh, by by offering our, our services and our skills to other partners. Uh, but it doesn't have to take that long time. Uh, it, it, I think this is a matter of um, of meeting up with and, uh, and engaging with uh, a few um, interested and dedicated organizations at the community level and then start working something out together. It doesn't have to take three years, mm. but it took quite a long yeah. time for, for us, you may say, because we're working in a very complex community yeah. with all the different barriers that exist there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I like this. Uh, I, I was trying to paraphrase Klaus's uh, comment uh, question before, and now he's uh, sent a new question in, uh, correcting me. So, uh, so, so at least we get this interaction. Uh, so now I'll just read it out from the screen over yeah. there. So you, uh, so listen. My question was more related to how the residents themselves are now generating ideas independently and bringing them to the organizations. Are you seeing any evidence of that in uh, in Tinkbia? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely a lot. This is again about the setting. We have a few community settings that in which people they come. It's a community garden and a community restaurant and so forth. So these are physical settings where people now like to come. And you know what happens when people like to be there, they feel safe, they feel comfortable, is that they start talking to each other. And we have demonstrated that people from different ethnic groups, ages, gender, and so forth, who normally may not speak very much to each other, when they come down into our setting, our physical setting, then we see social change there. They begin to talk, they begin to have fun, they begin to have a great time together. And they tell us, they express this. And also in that process, ideas are being generated. As they sit and drink a cup of coffee, mm. they say, why don't we produce honey? It's fine that we have a community restaurant, but we, I would like to have honey. Mm. And then the neighbor will say, okay, but how do we produce honey? Well, we should have some bees. Yeah. Okay, but then let's, let's ask if we can sort of get some support for, for bees. And when we hear this, we say, all right, there's energy here. Mm. There is resources, there is interest and enthusiasm. Let's see if we can start producing bees and honey. Okay. That's what we're doing right now in Zimbabwe. Cool. So to uh, to another question from uh, from Enrico, it's quite a, a, a long one, uh, and, but it touches. Uh, and here I'm trying to paraphrase again, but uh, it, it touches upon uh, the uh, the possible uh, controversy or 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 the interaction between the formal uh, partner, the municipality, and the informal sector. Um, have, have you seen any? Uh, how, how is how is how is that link? Are there any tensions that you have uh, you've uh, seen and 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 also uh, what have you uh, done to uh, to address them? Because it can create a, a, a mm. if not a conflict, then at least a tension that might be be relevant uh, to uh, to uh, mm. to address. And, and how have you done that? I don't think I would call it. Um problems or challenges or tension. What I would say is that when you work when we work with uh, municipal departments, then they we work in a in a political system and political systems are bound by political decisions and strategies and so forth. And this is something that is not negotiable, of course, because that's that is really defined at a at very high level and ultimately in a political process. Yeah. So this is one side of it. And the other side is the community based mm -hmm. organizations. Um, who are much more responsive to um, to the dynamics of everyday life in a in more let's say short term, more abrupt um, um, and dynamic situations. And of course, it's not always easy to make these ends meet. Mm. But what we do is that we, again, as I said before, we are very much uh, attentive to um, to the to the 
um, to the agendas that, that are being that are being expressed by both parties, also the private sector for that matter, who are also involved in various aspects. And as as you are attentive to this, and you can bring um, people together from the different uh, sides, then you can also uh, negotiate and discuss how we could make things work. An example is um, unemployment. We're working with unemployment. We're trying to establish uh, an intervention on employment and, and education, formalized education. And this is a good example where we have informal um, um, education institutions who, um, who, who are bending their traditional way of working by accepting to come into the community and to design uh, curricula and training programs according to the needs of citizens that we can um, uh, extract, bring forward in um, joint exercises, joint communications as far as what are the particular needs of uh, some of the citizens living in Tingbia. So this is an example where dialogue has bent the formal system not completely, but in a way that they are prepared to test and try to come into the community and provide formalized training in the community rather than in the schools and institutions where they normally perform their mm -hmm. their, their training. So bending a little bit, I think it's an attitudinal thing yeah. again. It's about, it's about mindset. That yeah. if you believe in the idea of working together, and if you believe in the idea that you should share power and influence, then everyone should bend a little bit on their principles yeah. and this is what we can see happening also in the also in the public sector um institutions and departments yeah even there <laughs> even yeah. there <laughs> yeah that, that's good uh, uh, let's um you've been so engaged so many years now in in Tingbia and uh, you know and you also have plans for the next uh, good handful of, of years um but uh, there's a couple of questions about um you know how you get started um, and uh, let me, uh, two questions here, one from Vladislav who says, uh, how did you identify the right stakeholders uh, and the external partnerships for, the, for this project? And uh, Maria, I think that can be you know, addressed in the same vein, have common goals been identified for bringing these various actors together? So, you know, here, I think we have a couple of participants who you are energized by what you're talking about, but, you know, don't have the benefit of the many years of, of work in the community. So how did you get started with this and what would be your advice here? Yeah, I think um, as far as the right stakeholders is concerned, I think it's that is a very interesting question, because if I should say that if I should have done something differently than what we did in the beginning, maybe it was that we sort of as we are at a health research institution so we so i come from the health sector and i have to address health issues but i also have a, a deep and sincere understanding of the social determinants as preconditions uh, for um for engaging in, in health and for bringing about uh, health change so what we did was that we uh, quite immediately as we engaged in the community we went to all the social sector institutions mm -hmm. mainly the housing associations and their social development plans and this was a good decision because then we sort of quickly came to the to the heart of the of the problem of bringing health and um, and social development together but I must say that if I could have done things again, I would not have abandoned, if I may say, the more classical health institutions like health centers and general practice and so forth as, as we did. Because we had this preconceived idea that we must engage with social sector stakeholders. And that is my response to the first question. We, we, we were so determined on addressing social issues that we that we went straight towards the social institutions. Not only um, not only the, um, the the um, the housing associations, which is a civil society organization, but also the social uh, departments in the municipality. That's important to say. Yeah. But um, but uh, but maybe we should have done things differently and 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 had tried from the very beginning also to um, to engage with the more classical health centers. And as far as the common goals is concerned, um, you can only have 
common goals if they are placed at a relatively high level. And that's why I've said again and again that we're talking here about community development with an with an with a, a component of a health promotion. But health promotion is absolutely not the only thing mm -hmm. here, nor is diabetes prevention. We see things together and we can all talk ourselves into the same goal of community development, which is based on the principles that I said before, participation, democratic and egalitarian principles and so forth, which is what we are doing. Everyone on board agrees on these issues, that people should be more empowered and have influence and so forth, respectfulness as far as interventions are concerned and so forth. These are common things that, that forms the goals. But had we said had, had we come to Tingbia saying that we would like to establish a very wide super setting with the only focus of preventing diabetes, then we would not have been able mm. to do anything constructively, I would say, at least not in terms of establishing a super setting in that yeah. community. So you have to be to, to bend, bend back a little bit and, and try to be open for, for other agendas, as I said yeah. before. Yeah. I, I you know I agree you very much with you, and I think what uh, probably is uh, is is ra is appealing with the City Change Diabetes Program is that we have not come with a preconceived idea about what we want to achieve. We've come with an approach uh, and and an invitation to uh, to try to understand uh, a problem a little bit better, and then based on on understanding that both from a you know, biomedical, but also uh, from a social and cultural perspective, we have, uh, you know, increased our knowledge there. And also by bringing uh, different stakeholders and community organizations together uh, in the cities around the world, you know, to interpret that data and then say, so what are, what are the implications for our local community? And so we can define our local actions and, and make the make the change uh, here. So so I think it's, uh, I think what you're doing in Tingbia is probably slightly larger as you're applying the super setting than, than, than what we see in some of, the, some of the cities here, but I think it uh, still serves as a very uh, great inspiration. Then there's a question here I, from... I would, oh, go ahead, Paul. No, I would like to say that, that just to follow up on this, that um, it's, it's that the principles that we apply in the super setting approach have turned out to be extremely important mm. because of the fact that there are so many different agendas at stake. And there is a need for glue to keep things together, to mend things so that we don't move in all kinds of direction without having the same overall set of understandings of where we are moving and why. Mm. That's why you need principles. So mm. it's a very, very strong advice mm. um, from my side and from our team's side that you should uh, you should develop principles and you should talk the principles through with your partners. Also, as new partners are coming on board, try to discuss it, try to negotiate it. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think the principles, once they are established, they should be there. But the interpretation of how to implement the principles in practice, mm -hmm. this is where there's room for a lot of negotiation. Yeah. And this is really strong advice because look at it, what we're doing, we are engaging not only in social change and in urban gardening, but also in climate change, in our environmental protection, mm -hmm. in farming issues, nature use. And you could imagine a situation where they all just drift in all kinds of direction mm -hmm. with no common purpose. That's why we need principles mm -hmm. and a higher vision mm -hmm. of where we are moving. So that's a really strong advice for yeah. me if others want to embark on this uh, this pathway. Yeah. Um, I'd like to touch upon the issue about sustainability and how to keep momentum, uh, because um, you know everything is fine at the wedding and you will also enjoy the honeymoon. But then what happens? I mean, what have you taken deliberate steps or approaches to make sure that 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 uh, you know it also the collaboration and the partnership also work uh, on a uh, rainy Monday afternoon, for example? Mm. I, I, if, if, you, if you talk about sustainability, so looking at it in a wider perspective and longer term perspective, then I normally think of this in two ways. I think of it in terms of financial sustainability on one hand, and I think here it's very important not to uh, misguide yourself in believing 
that operations can continue without any sort of income and funding and so forth, because they can't. Everything that you do costs money. So um, so we don't have this idea that nothing that it costs nothing. What, what we have noted with a great enthusiasm is that the mo many of the ideas that are generated in our super setting, they are very, very fair and low cost. They mainly uh, address issues of, of, of getting established in this, this trust-based and uh, social community around things in the, in the, in the, in our in our settings so it's they're not very costly and very very expensive what we do is to try to keep uh, cost down uh, cost downs but of course it's it would be an illusion not to say that it costs money so we also have a fundraising sort of program and i'm very much involved myself in trying to establish some some funding for for salary support of our coordinator and and other things but the, and that's one aspect of sustainability the other aspect I think is uh, is organizational sustainability. That is, how do we maintain in the longer run this partnership? What does it take to to maintain it, especially in a situation uh, where there is a lot of dynamics uh, in partners and in projects? Some projects are ending and partners may slip away. New projects are coming and new partners come on board. And I think here is extremely uh, important that you uh, sort of embrace this um, dynamics of partnerships that we see in Tingbia. That it, a partnership is not a fixed thing. Mm. For us, a partnership is a, it's a very dynamic sort of um, group of interested um, um, organizations that come on board because they really want to do something together. And then it changes. Funding changes, organizations and so forth changes. And then, it's, then sustainability is not the issue. Maybe projects will not survive in the long run, and they should not. But the super saving survives because it con it's 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 a, it is a dynamic organism. I don't I don't know if you mean, you mentioned the word creature or something like that before, but but uh, but it is then a dynamic creature that that uh, that has its, its own life, mm. and it should be. And as long as you can as you can if you have your 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 principles, and you can you can sort of um, make it a, a appealing and interesting and attractive to come on board. Then the super setting will um, maintain and survive for for a very long time and, and should do it. So that's the organizational stability uh, in which uh, dynamism is the key word for for or, or an, another word, a synonymon for for sustainability. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Um, there there was a, uh, also a question about that. Uh, it you know it's first and last about uh, in, enabling a change of mindset and and, and behavior, uh, but I think ultimately. And now we're in very in a very narrow health focus here with cities changing diabetes. We want to bend the diabetes curve, uh, ideally, and you know measuring prevalence and the change in prevalence is something where you look either look at a half or a whole decade. How do you keep track? I saw you had some some uh, some some data there, but I'm I'm interested. Can you already see now that that there are things that can at least be proxies for for uh, for for that bending the diabetes curve uh, in Tingbia? Yes, proxies. That's a good word, proxies. Because we, we, as I said it before in my little speech here, that uh, that we we have prop. It's not that we cannot do it technically. We can easily do it technically, but we have, let's say, moral um, 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 difficulties in asking citizens to deliver samples and uh, to engage in clinical examinations. And so, but it's not that we cannot do it. We could sort of easily do it, but we we are simply scared of jeopardizing this trust that we have we have established and therefore we at least for the time being we don't uh, involve ourselves in this kind of of, uh, of samples of biomedical and clinical examinations mm. so we don't have this this prime time this this um, this uh, real life understanding of the dynamics of uh, the health indicators among citizens in in Tingbia. we don't what we do have and i didn't mention it um, I mentioned that we do re register-based um, analysis uh, of socioeconomic status. I mentioned that, and that's that's the, is what we have the capacity in our institution to do. Um, and these also include health data, so we can actually say something about uh, the health situation. For instance, when I mentioned that the prevalence of type 2 diabetes is almost 10%, um, it's actually 9.14. Uh, we have it from the national health registers, mm -hmm. and and uh, and are very appreciative of that system. 
but it's not for, for the sake of the global community. It's, it, this is not very interesting because it, it, there are a few nations in the world that has such a detailed uh, uh, register as we have in Denmark for social economy and health and, and other parameters. So it may not be very interesting for the international audience. And therefore, we're coming back to the proxy talk. And what we think is important is to document behavioral change. We know from science that once behavior changes, then the likelihood of also seeing health change is calculable. Mm. And it's relatively high, provided that uh, behavioral change is also high. So we are much more attentive towards understanding behavioral dynamics in the uh, in there. And here we have some interesting finding beginning to pop up now. We have uh, now um, qualitative statements of various kinds showing that people, they uh, appreciate what we're doing. They have absorbed uh, and adopted the, the, what they have learned and taught, for, for instance, in, in cooking classes and practices at home. We've done various kind of photo exercises to see and document how they then practice uh, these within their families and so forth. And we can see that there is change as far as uh, behavior is concerned. Also in the number and the and the different characteristics of people who engage in our 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 settings in Zambia, mm -hmm. we see many coming in now. They have they are quite different in terms of their characteristics and so forth. So we can see much more social dynamics in our in our settings as well. So um, so uh, so as far as proxies for change is concerned, mm -hmm. this is what we are very sort of uh, attentive towards, and where we are also embarking now on more sort of objective tests, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, of uh, physical uh, activity that we would like. To, to test in small children to see if our intervention can uh, influence uh, those those aspects. I think actually the uh, the whole uh, aspect of or measuring impact uh, through uh, looking at behavioral changes is something that uh, that that uh, we see many are struggling with, or at least trying to find uh, uh, the smart way to do it. And and I hope we uh, maybe we also can can uh, enable the exchange of views about that and, and maybe come back to that uh, at a later, later stage once you have uh, developed that uh, uh, even uh, even further. Um, I would like to, uh, we're very close to the end, maybe just a, a, a short question that, uh, hopefully also a short answer, but that could be very long. Tomorrow it's uh, one year ago that, uh, that Denmark was closed down uh, due to uh, the coronavirus. And uh, I assume it has, uh, has impacted um, Uh, think we are changing diabetes, but I'm more interested in what way. Uh, of course, you probably had to uh, cancel some activities, but but have, how have you managed over the past year, and and how are you, you know, programming with COVID, if you can say, as you move forward, uh, because it's probably gonna stay with us for for some time uh, in one way or the other. Absolutely, and that's why I deliberately uh, included uh, one of our COVID uh, interventions in my presentation before. That was to demonstrate that we are also part of real life. We are not a bubble in which we are uh, uh, shutting down um, all influences from the wider world. We cannot do that. Tingbia is also affected by lockdown, and we have, uh, I mean, it has been devastating as far as, uh, as social life in Tingbia is concerned. So we we did test a different at a different um, strategies, as I mentioned before, and it was successful. It's it's not optimal, but we have to cope with the situation and do whatever we can, and we are extremely prepared to do so. The good thing is that now we are slowly building up again. I mean, Denmark is opening and Tingia is opening, so we can sort of resume some of our plans and uh, and continue them uh, during this, uh, this spring here. Yeah. But we are very much prepared to um, adjust and adapt to the situation in the in society wider and we have ideas because there is a lot of creativity and innovation in the group of partners that we have in Tingia. and trust me that there will be new ideas for covid coming up if uh, lockdown continues yeah <laughs> and thank you for that and thank you paul uh, for sharing your your learnings and insights with us it has been really truly uh, enlightening and I, i hope it has also been been so uh, it's i mean i'm the only one who can clap here I, if had this been a physical workshop that would we probably been uh, you could, would have heard a louder uh, um, uh, applause here so thank to you, you uh, out there i hope this uh, uh, the session today has provided you with some uh, beneficial insights and and learnings that you can ad adapt to your setting and, and your program 
the recording uh, of this will be uh, available uh, on on the City Change Diabetes YouTube channel, and we will also post it on the LinkedIn site uh, for for this event. Uh, and uh, so so you can also share it with 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 your colleagues if if you find that is uh, useful. On the screen, you can see there's an email address if you have further questions that we did, did not cover in uh, in this session. Thank you for the many questions that came in. We did not get to all of them, but we uh, we can hopefully do that uh, in, a, in bilaterally. Um, and then I encourage you to uh, to go back to uh, cityschangesdiabetes.com, look at the Urban Diabetes Action Framework for some of the methodologies, but then also go to tingbiachangingdiabetes.dk. Uh, for, for the insights on the specific program here. On the 29th of April, we will have Stuart Nelson from the Institute of Spirituality uh, 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 from, uh, from Houston to talk about faith and diabetes, a super interesting case about how you can use faith and houses of faith to uh, bridge uh, to people who are uh, isolated uh, or mistrusting uh, the, the formal healthcare system and still uh, do some health promotion and, and prevention of diabetes. Uh, but thank you uh, to everyone today and thank you, Paul, for, for, uh, for your presentation. And uh, I hope everyone will have a wonderful day. Thank you. Yeah.